Welcome guys, this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials on SM Edit. Um, it's a very versatile tool and uh, I recently used it to show off uh, some uh, modeling I've done converting an OBJ into a StarMade ship. That is the, uh, the Gundam I created and the simple process was I obtained the, the, o, the dot .obj model. There are many places you can get these. I used binvox to convert the dot .obj model to voxels so that there were less errors in the conversion. Then I used smedit to import the binvox. Once painted roughly in smedit, I exported this as a blueprint. And then you load the blueprint in space and complete all the detailing. So obviously you might make mistakes when you paint, so you've got to finish that up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You can use Binvox to hollow out the model on a command line when you convert, or you can use SMEdit to do it after the point of being a blueprint. So, first thing you're going to need to know is where am I going to get SMEdit? I'm going to put the link in the description on the left hand side, but you will also see starmadewiki.com slash wiki slash SMEdit just at the top of the screen now. That there is the address. So you're going to want to go there and click on download. This is the official page which the uh, developer of this tool is going to be using and it does include a kind of launcher. So we're going to download this file and once it's downloaded from starmademultiverse.com and like I say you click download, agree and download. That will, oh and then keep depending on your browser or use save as. Anyway, once you've got the file on your computer, you're going to have to copy the smedit.jar over to your StarMade installation folder. Once you run the smedit file and you install it to StarMade, okay, so wherever your launcher is, there's a folder called StarMade with a capital S and a capital M. If you double click that folder and put the smedit.jar file in here, when you double click it, it will actually check to see if you have the software required in the right places. If it doesn't, it will ask you if you want to update. It's just, just say yes. This here is SMEdit, and I'm going to be going over the interface and the features in later videos. But for now, all I need to know is that you can click on Modify and see that menu there. If you can't see that menu there, close SMEdit and return to where you installed the SMEdit jar. Confirm that jo underscore sm is in the correct location. It will be, otherwise you would not have seen the window open just now for the editor. You will also need to confirm that a folder called jo underscore plugins is actually in that StarMade installation folder. Double click it to verify joefilemods.jar is inside there. Everything in the plugins folder is, uh, in the modify folder rather, is pretty much in there. If you don't have that, it won't work. You'll still be able to paint and do various other things, but a lot of the advanced features are contained in here. So, now I'm going to assume that you have managed to install using the SM Edit jar. You've got the Joe underscore SM in the correct location, and you've got your plugins file in the correct location. So now we can move on. If you want to test this, like I said just now, double click joe.s uh, joe underscore sm dot jar or smedit dot jar and then click modify. So now we've got the tool running, we're going to need some models. So first place I'm going to go is I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the Trimble 3D warehouse even though uh, the Google SketchUp warehouse is closing in October it seems this one is not so um, the modeling pipeline for Google Earth will be retired on o October 1st so it doesn't look like these models are going anywhere anytime soon I was worried that they might be going but they're not it's kind of why I did so many mid models in that last video in any case, we're going to find ourselves a Daedalus. And as I can see here, we've got 3D view. We can rotate it round. We can go, yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then we can click download model. 
you're going to download the .skp file, which is 9 meg, it's still pretty big. And then what we're going to do is we are going to download SketchUp. Again, sketchup.com slash download. Just select personal projects. Uh, enter your email address. You know, I just put game design in. <laughs> it's a bit inflated claim, but you know. Check this box and then download. Once it's downloaded, you'll be able to open the file which you downloaded here. In this case, I've already done this and it's here. Now, I've already exported this to OBJ, but I will show you how I did that. If I click on the rotate button here, we can have a look and see our model. And as you can see, the model looks great in this software. So, what we have to do is click File, Export, 3D Model, and then choose a file name. I chose simply you. I'm not going to export this again because like I say I've already done that. You would click export. Now we're going to be going into Binvox. So um, my first sort of point is when you export the file you could just export it here as I've done. Um, what I would suggest is creating a folder under C called OBJ and you're going to put all your objects in here. So if I now come back here, just copy this. I'm going to do this the cheat way. Um, yeah, because I'm being lazy and not. I'm just doing it in an open window. Uh, I'm going to go to OBJ and I'm going to paste it. So now U.OBJ is in that folder. So I'm going to cancel that window. I was just cheating. Now, just to confirm that that folder is in the correct lo that file is in the correct location. We're going to have a look inside my OBJ folder. You'll notice that I have a number of files in here which are not OBJs. If I open the Binvox package, which you can get on the download, you'll see Binvox. Uh, create, that's just a shortcut to CMD, so you can get to the command line from this folder quickly. Glut32.dll and Viewvox. I don't tend to use Viewvox myself but it is useful for checking your uh, output. So, we are going to be using Binvox. For this, I copied the entire Vox package into my OBJ folder in my C root directory. So, if I now uh, find u.obj, there it is, 9 megabytes. So, the next step is to open up your uh, command and uh, you can't really see that amazingly well, but it says the binvox dash D space 260. So what I'm doing is I'm specifying the X, Y, Z limit of the box. It's going to create this model inside as 260. Then I use dash RI to remove the interior and then space U dot OBJ, which is my object file. I believe I broke something there, so I'm just going to try that one again. Uh, right, so we've got 58,000 faces. Okay, so now open up my command line, and I'm going to type in u2.obj. u1, u.obj didn't work for whatever reason. This is the trial and error process, even though you've got a method. Sometimes it won't work, and it could be down to the model that you're using. So we're back at the point of running the command line again. Now what I'm going to be doing is binvox dash d space 260, which is, uh, you could call it diameter if that helps you to remember it, but it's the dimensions of the box, which we're going to render this model into. Dash hi main makes for a hollow inside. As you can see, we've got the full switch list here if you want to uh, just hit pause. Uh, and then there's the uh, syntax there if you just want to you want to see that. Now, going back to the command prompt, it's RI, not HI, and I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> there we go. RI for remove interior, not hollow interior. That was my bad. So off it goes, creating the mesh. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Come on. There we go. Didn't like being moved, but I moved it anyway. 
So it's scanning the ship from top to bottom, left to right, across the X, Y, and Z. Once it's done that, it'll uh, clear the interior, which it, you can tell where the interior is by deleting the uh, filled blocks. Okay, so that's now done, 340 bytes, which is a lot more encouraging than the uh, the uh, Atlantis model, which was about five times the size of that. Now, from here, I'm just going to type DIR, and you can confirm that the uh, binvox file is actually in there. So let's just find the bin, the uh, u, u dot, u2 dot binvox. Good. So now we can exit the command prompt, and we can go into uh smedit so where are we so we open smedit.jar bring smedit across into the screen so we can see what's going on and then we're going to say modify import binvox now here all i have to do is type u2 the beauty of having it at c colon backslash obj backslash the name is i only have to remember the name and it's very short, so it's easy to get that path right. So in comes the Daedalus. I'm going to click Modify Hollow anyway, uh, just in case. And normally I would do a bit of painting at this point, but if we just look at the model, it's mostly grey, so the detail is going to have to be done by hand. Um, so I've got this model obviously as a reference, which is nice. If I now go back to uh, here, I can choose Save As Blueprint, and it'll ask me what I want to name it. So in fact, I'm just going to say, yeah, Save As Blueprint. I'm going to call this Daedalus. Daedalus. I think it's Daedalus. There we go. All right, done. And now we can exit. We can exit this, we can exit this, and I will see you in StarMade. So, I'm going to be spawning in the uh, ship that we were just working with. So, that'll be the Daedalus. Um, it's uh, quite cheap actually, just over 6 million. It'll be interesting to see how big it's come out. Still got a bit of an issue with uh, determining sizes. So, anyway. Here it is, the Daedalus. As you can see, it's converted across OK. It probably would have been better if it had been scaled up a little bit. You can see where there's some fine detail coming off that's just too thin to recognize as a block. So you've got a few artifacts here and there. Um, but you could either tidy them up, incorporate them, build off them. Um, there's, you know, it's not a problem at all because uh, the main shape of the ship is there and it's you know accurate to scale or it should be as long as the model is accurate and you can put a lot of time into an ac into an accurate model uh, going off of like officially released schematics and plans a lot of sci-fi communities have that kind of thing sci-fi meshes is a good another place to go I only used uh, the warehouse because it was easy for the purposes of the tutorial to just download a model convert it and show from start to finish um, this is a bit of an overview guide as well because I'm going to be releasing uh, tutorial videos dedicated to each part. I just wanted to release a couple of videos to cover the process uh, now because there are a lot of people asking me how do you do this and uh, I'm getting flooded with those. I'm, I'm trying to explain to people but if I was to do it individually it, it would just, uh, that would be all I ever do. <laughs> and um, I'm deviating from my uh, schedule for the channel at the moment so I can cover this. I think it's worth doing because everyone needs to know about the tool even if all you're going to do is do a bit of painting on some of the ships you've built in the, in the game. It certainly saves a lot of time. Um, the bulk actions are really good for that. So yeah, um, big shout outs to Joe from uh, creating the SM edit. Also got to thank the people that created Binvox, I don't really know them. I think that was originally done for Minecraft or possibly something else. Um, so like I say, uh, I'll put links in the description for the SM edit tool and for uh, the Binvox package and then you can download those tools, follow this guide. Um, if there's anything which I've missed from this tutorial, or the last one, please put it in the comments or tell me on mushroomfleet.co.uk because I'd like to make sure that the tutorial series I make is as good as it could be. Thanks for watching.